Today we want to look at a constrained optimization problem. Remember the idea here is that we're trying to find the maximum or minimum values of some objective function subject to some constraints. And the constraint function will be uh, of the form g of x, y equals some constant. So as an example, let's suppose that we want to maximize uh, x squared, y squared subject to x squared plus y squared equals four. Constraint optimization can be solved with, uh, problems can be solved with Lagrange multipliers, where we solve the system, the gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g, where lambda is some constant, and g is equal to k, where that's the other constant. So this is setting up a system of equations. If we look at the gradient of f, so the gradient of f, we take the derivative with respect to x times i, 2x y squared i, and then the derivative of with respect to y times j, so 2x squared y j. There's the gradient of f. Then the gradient g of x is x squared plus y squared. So the gradient of g is 2x times i plus 2y times j. So this gives us two equations where we equate the, um, the i components of gradient of f and the i component of gradient of g. So this leads to two equations where 2xy squared is equal to lambda times 2x. And 2x squared y is equal to 2y times lambda. And then we have the constraint as well, x squared plus y squared equals four. So here's the system that we need to solve. So, once we get to the system in Lagrange multipliers, then we have to start making things up as we go, because we get all these methods for solving linear systems. We spend a whole class solving linear systems um, called linear algebra, but now we have a nonlinear system to solve. So, what we might notice is that if we solve, if we if we solve for lambda, one strategy could be to solve for lambda, and well, let's just do that. <laughs> let's solve for lambda. So this first equation will tell us that lambda is equal to 2xy squared over 2x. So lambda is just going to give us y squared. And then in the second equation, we find out that lambda is equal to 2x squared y over 2y. So the 2y cancels and we're left with x squared. Since lambda has to equal itself, we find out that x squared is equal to y squared. Now we can plug this into the constraints. So we took these first two equations eliminated the lambda, and now we're gonna and take the results and we're gonna put that back into our constraint. So that's gonna end up with x squared plus x squared equals four. And so we get x equals plus or minus the square root of two. And so that tells us that y is equal to plus or minus the square root of two as well. questions?
So now all we have to do is figure out which ones are going to be the maximums and which ones are going to be the minimums. And we can do that just by plugging them into the original function. So if x is the, the square root of 2, positive square root of 2, then y is positive square root of 2. We just have to plug those into the x squared, y squared to find the highest values and lowest values. Any questions? So the setup is always the same in these problems. The setup always comes down to this system of equations to solve. But at that point, we could standardize some things by say solving, eliminate the lambda. And in this case, it worked out pretty, everything worked out nice and simple because uh, we were able to cancel some stuff out. But this part where we're sol getting down to the system, the solving this nonlinear system, that's where, uh, that's where all the difficulty is going to lie. That's the tricky part. Setting up the system is no problem. Solving the system is uh, where experience is going to come into play. One thing you may have noticed is that when we, um, oh, no, that's not an issue. Never mind. Any questions? Comments? All right. Let's pause the video here and talk about quiz three.